Hey, good morning. So this morning, I am heading over to Scott's Carpet Cleaning. Uh, we are going to shoot a promo for his business, and so I'm really excited about that. And so, heading off. Good morning. Hey, good. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you back in about 30 minutes. I'm about to step into an appointment, but yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. Hey, good morning, sir. How you doing? Good. So just got done with Philip over at Scott's Carpet Cleaning. Uh, Talked about a lot of really great things. Have some really cool plans in the future. So now off to the church. So right now, just putting together the worship set for this weekend. Just listening to some Hillsong and then also uh, just going over in my head what Rob's going to be preaching about and trying to make a cohesive service. I'm just putting into the computer all of the guides and the tracks and the cues that we, that we use on a Sunday morning. So something that we started yesterday was daily devotions. And so if you haven't seen yesterday's daily devotion, go back and check out Vlog 24. We're reading through the book of Galatians, starting in chapter one. But today we're gonna to jump into chapter two. And what I would love for you to do right now is to pause right now, go read Galatians chapter two, and then come back for my observations. Okay, so this is what's going on. Paul is telling a story to the church of Galatia, and he's letting them know that the Holy Spirit called him up to Jerusalem, and he went there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ we see that he was preaching it to those with high reputation in private. And I think the reason why we're told these details is because Paul wants us to know that no matter who you're talking to, the gospel does not change. So we see that there is some issues going on in Jerusalem. Paul says that there are false brothers, that there are people in their midst, in their fellowship, that are spreading that you need to be circumcised before you can follow Jesus. This brings me to my very first point. Everyone that's with you isn't always for you. But how can you tell? How do you know if there are people in your fellowship that aren't necessarily for you and you coming closer to Christ? We need to look to God's word. Anybody that's telling you something that's contrary to God's word, they may be with you, but they're not for you. They aren't necessarily hoping that you were drawing closer to Christ, they are probably hoping that they draw closer to their customs, to their preferences, to what they want. And so evaluate right now, people that are in your circle, are they drawing you closer to Christ or are they drawing you away from Christ? You see, the reason why this was a big deal that the Jews were preaching that you needed to be circumcised first before you could become to Jesus is because it diminishes the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I want you to imagine right now that a church says to you, you need to pay a thousand dollars before you can become a believer in Jesus. Or I want you to imagine someone in your life tells you, you need to become holy. You need to become perfect and blameless and righteous before you ever can come to God. We wouldn't be able to do it and it once again would diminish everything that Jesus has already done for us. We see that this comes to a head in the early church. Paul, while he's in Jerusalem, meets up with Cephas. Now you know Cephas, we know him as Peter. And we see that Peter, at the time, when he was with his Gentile friends, he was acting like a Gentile. But when he was with his Jewish friends, he was acting like a Jew. And the problem with this is it was hindering Gentiles from following Jesus because they had all of these requirements and customs that they needed to do before they could follow Jesus. So here's the crazy piece. When Paul meets up with Peter, he says to him, why do you act like a Gentile when you're around Gentiles and you act like a Jew when you're around Jews? He totally called him out. He didn't call him out because he wanted to be mean to him. He called him out because he loved him. He also loved the people that Peter was preaching to, and he wanted to see those people come to Jesus and not be hindered by old laws and custom. So what does this mean for you and me today? If you're sitting watching this video 
and you're feeling like you're not good enough, if you're feeling like there's something that you need to do, like you need to come to church more often before you can accept Christ, you need to stop cursing before you accept Christ, that you somehow need to, on your own power, by your own strength, get better so that you can accept Christ, that is a lie from the very beginning of the very first church in Jerusalem. You have access to Jesus Christ today. It is a free gift by God given to anyone who would believe. I wanna end on this verse in Galatians chapter two. I think it sums it up way better than any point that I could ever make. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So now that we've had our spiritual bread, now it's time to eat our daily bread. So this is always the critical moment of decision. Do you go into the next pizza or do you stop? YOLO. Last pizza. So just knocked out the weekend set list. John did all the lighting cues. I did the pro presenter and the Ableton. Now we are ready for practice on Thursday night. A lot goes into a weekend service. Super grateful for our tech team at ACC. Uh, man, they just serve so diligently and work so well behind the scenes, making sure all of the lights and lyrics and all the different things just work. And definitely really grateful for our worship team um, as they serve you know, every week with so much cheer and joy in their hearts. And so now we gotta shut this down. So now just gotta pick Emory up. Uh, she had Girl Scouts after school with Diana, and so I'm gonna go pick her up, take her home, and then hopefully have a pretty chill night. Maybe try to watch a movie with Josie. We'll see. It looks cool, I like it. Did you have fun at Girl Scouts? Cool. So just got home, kind of burning the daylight, but gonna try to get a run in. So back at it, gonna run to the gas station and then come back. It'll be about two miles, maybe a little more. Um, trying to push a little bit harder than two days ago. All right, 2.14 miles, um, 18 minutes, 46 seconds. Oh gosh, time to stretch. Um, I don't feel like I'm gonna die, which is really nice. Um, and maybe a note for next Wednesday, don't eat Little Caesars. Oh man, that's probably what's underneath my ribs and killing me right now. But anyways, that's it. Hey, thanks for joining me today.